Hi everyone, this is part two on level two of Next Level Playing. Next Level Playing is a course by Paul Davids and it's divided in, into separate levels. Uh, the course is aimed at intermediate electric guitar and focuses on topics such as uh, guitar solos, improvising and improving your musical understanding. So in the other video about level two of Next Level Playing, I discussed improvising using pentatonic scale patterns. But in this video, I'm going to talk about triads. Now, if you're also taking next level playing and you pass level two, or you did some other guitar courses from Justin Guitar or something, you probably know what triads and triad shapes are. But for others that may be watching and don't know, a triad is basically like a miniature chord. A major or minor chord contains just three notes. Let's take a major chord as an example, the C major. Let's play a C major open chord. So within this chord, I'm playing five strings. So there are five notes, but let's, uh, let's have a closer look at them. So this, the thickest string, is a C. Then we have an E, G, C, and E. So even though I play five notes on five strings, there are just three unique notes, the C, E, and the G note. So often when you're playing open chords or bar chords, you will notice that out of these three notes, the notes will often be repeating. Not with triads. In triad chords, triad shapes, you are just using three strings, three notes. You only use these unique notes, a C, E and a G for a C major chord. So in level two of next level playing, the course presents various triad shapes for both major and minor chords on different string combinations. So just for a major uh, triad chord, there are various ways of playing it. So the triad, the chord, contains three different notes, a C, E and a G note. And we could start on the C note, but could, we could also start on the E note or on the G note, on the thickest string as the bass note. So then we could have triads, uh, like normal in root position triads that start on the C note. We could also start a triad on the third, which is called the first inversion, or you could start a triad on the fifth, the second inversion. What is the third? What is the fifth? Uh, these are the notes from the major scale, in this case the C major scale. And for now I'd like to leave it at there. There are probably other YouTube videos or guitar courses that explain the major scale in more detail. So let's play uh, a C major triad with the root note on the thickest string while just playing the three thinnest strings. So the root note will be on the G string, the, the third string. So where, where is a C actually? So we have a C here. And then if we go, go down we have C. E, G. So a C chord. Then let's play it in first inversion with the third in the bass. So the third in the C chord is the E. But where is the E on the third string? Well, let's look for it. It's here. So now we have to uh, continue the chord with E, G, C, which is still a C chord, just the order of notes is different. So here we have E, E, G, C another C major chord. And now there's still the other version with the, the fifth, the G in the bass. Let's also play it. So the G is right here. Then we have the C and the E. So now we have three different ways of playing a C chord on the three thinnest strings. Now next level playing also presents the minor version of this and also all triad shapes on other string combinations, such as the second, third, fourth string, the third, fourth, fifth string, and the fourth, fifth, and sixth string. And because there are suddenly more options, uh, similar to with improvising, it made me look a bit more closely at all these different shapes. So the course teaches these triad shapes based on two different chords, a G major chord and an A minor chord. But what really helped me was transforming these chords. So transforming the G major into a G minor, and transforming the A minor into an A major chord. Seeing the difference between major and minor really helps, I think, to understand what, what you're actually playing. But let's, let's still go one step further. Let's level up there. Let's also look at the order of the notes. So let's summarize it again with the C major chord. So with the, the triad in the normal, the root position, the bottom string is the one that decides if you're playing a C chord or an E chord. The middle string, is the one that decides if you're playing a major or minor chord. Move to the first inversion. In this case, the, the bass note is the third, so it decides if you're going to play a major or minor chord 
and the finest string, the bottom string, is going to decide if you're playing a C chord, a G chord, or a B chord. And in the second inversion, the, the middle string is the one that decides if you're going to play a C chord or a G chord, and the bottom, the finest string, is going to decide if you're playing a major or minor chord by lowering it from the major position, ah, a one fret. So when learning these triad shapes, what I did was, first of all, when I was learning the triad shapes, I was first saying out loud which are the notes and playing. C, E, G. Well, this is kind of nice. Uh, you also get to learn the fretboard even more, especially when you're playing in the bit, the unknown zone of the fretboard. But then I would also start practicing what is the note function that I'm playing. So in this case, C, root, E, third, G, fifth. And also with the inversions. And also by playing uh, different chords than the G major and the A minor chord that the course uh, is presenting, you are uh, learning more about the fretboard. But also, for me at least, I was uh, I started to associate the patterns less with a G major or an A minor chord. Because the triad shapes are not a G major or an A minor chord, they can form any chord. So I started to look more at the triad shapes as a shape that can form any chord based on the root note. They are just a shape with a root note and a third. So one more thing. Uh, next level playing shows the triad shapes on all the um, adjacent string combinations. And I only showed the ones on the, the finished strings. But one thing that I noticed is that the triad shapes on the thickest three strings, so the, the E string, the A string and the D string, are actually the same as the triad shapes on the A string, the D string and the G string. Now that was quite a lot of talking. So in this video I aimed really to um, kind of compare these different triad shapes and really um, help to transform the major to minor. So this was part two of the lessons I learned for next level playing. In part one, as I discussed earlier, I'm playing the solo, there's some improvising. Maybe a bit more interesting, but for me, the, these triad shapes were also one of the, the revelations of this level, so I felt like I couldn't really leave it out either. I think this is really quite an interesting topic, and kind of my routine for this was, as I mentioned, like first saying the names of the notes out loud and the note function, but also to try and play a different chord every day. So on day, let's say on Monday, you focus on an A chord, on Tuesday on a B chord, then on a C chord, and so on. I think this really helped me as well to learn more, um, to get more comfortable with the fretboard. So I hope you um, got something out of this video. Uh, and uh, well, thanks for watching. Uh, have a great rest of the day and see you in the next video. Bye bye.